So looking at inverse Poisson, um, this is a situation that you might run into if you're looking to do some of the merit and excellence level problems. You'll need to know how to use the formula, but it is given to you, you do not need to memorize it. And in these problems, it's a situation where you've been given the probability of an event occurring, and you're asked instead to find the mean. And we can only do this if you're given the probability of it not happening or if you can figure out what that is from the probability of it likely happening. So basically we've got a situation where you either need to know when the probability when x is equal to zero or the probability when x is greater than or equal to one. Remember our reason for that is the probability, maybe if we do it this way, zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. x is greater than one is all of that stuff. So this is all the probability of x greater or equal to one. And over here, probability of x by itself is just that. And so when we add those two things together, they're supposed to add up to one. So if you know, for instance, the probability of it happening at least once, the probability of it not happening would be equal to one minus the probability of it happening at least once. So we often have to use that. And again, in words, that means at least one time or at least once. So if we know the probability of it not happening, either from figuring it out backwards or just directly being given it, we can use that information here in the formula. And the reason we need to do that is because when x is equal to zero, we actually have some ability to um, to reduce this formula into something we can use. So if we take a look at that, if we say p x is equal to zero, so when x is equal to zero, we're going to replace lambda, sorry, not lambda, we're going to replace x with zero. So here, anytime you see an x, you're going to write in a zero instead. But by zero factorial. Now the fancy thing about this is that Anything to the power of zero equals one, and factorial of zero also equals one. So basically those two things cancel, and you're left with the probability of x equals zero is equal to e to the negative lambda. And I'm just gonna whiz through this. If you guys have done the calculus, you'll probably be more familiar with it, but um, you can get to the end of this and I'll show you what you'd wanna memorize if you need to memorize it. So to solve for lambda, we need to take the n natural log, so we're going to do ln of the probability is equal to ln of e to the negative lambda. And because of taking the ln with the power, that becomes basically minus lambda is equal to ln p of x equals zero, because ln and e effectively kind of cancel each other. So then the last thing to deal with is the negative in front of it. So negative ln, putting that on the other side, is equal to lambda. So that's your average. And if you wanted to memorize something, that could be the one that you would memorize if you want to memorize a formula, if you're not good with the algebra to get down there. And ln is just a button on your calculator. It literally says ln on it, so you'll be able to see it there. So that's the derivation of how we actually end up using this formula, and that's the one you'd want to memorize if you are going to memorize anything. And let's take a look at how this actually works in an example. So in a sample of reports, 30% had at least one error. So at least one, I'm seeing that. That's probability of x greater than or equal to one. That's my at least one and it has a probability of 30%, it says 30%, so that's 0 0.30, converting the percentage to decimal. Find the mean, which is basically finding lambda, errors per report. So I know my probability of at least one happening and I need to find my mean. So my first step is to find the probability of it not happening. So again, if it happens at least once 30% of the time, that means to me it doesn't happen 70% of the time. Well, now that I know that information, I can plug that in. So here, thinking about what we're going to do, 
is equal to e negative lambda lambda to the zero over zero factorial and probability of it not happening is 70. Those cancel and we're left with just that. And again, taking the ln of both sides and rearranging, we're going to end up using negative ln of 0 0.7, my probability, is equal to lambda. And if we plug that into our calculator, again the ln key is here, so we're going to say minus ln 0 0.7 is equal to that. So that means to me my lambda, lambda will be equal to wrong way, 0 0.3567, so 0 0.3567 is lambda. Right, so again I had to figure out what's the probability of it not happening, and then from there it's basically minus ln the probability of it not happening is equal to lambda, using exactly what I said you could memorize up above if you need to. Oops, don't want to delete that. Okay, so again, you can use this directly. Once you know p of x is equal to zero, just plug it in. Minus ln of that number is going to be equal to the lambda that you've got. Okay, and once you know lambda, you can go on to solve any of the other problems that they might ask about it. So looking at the second example, there have been large earthquakes in the South Island in eight of the last 20 years. Find the mean number of large earthquakes per year. So again, I've got a hint here, they're telling me to find the mean number, so I know this is going to be an inverse because I'm looking for what that is equal to. I need to know what is lambda equal to. And here we're saying, note that this is not the same as saying eight large earthquakes, if, um, that we've had saying eight large earthquakes in 20 years because there can be more than one earthquake in a particular year. So again, that eight earthquakes over the last 20 years, that they could have happened in any time period, they could have happened all in one year, as we know. But um, we're going to use that information because if I'm going to work backwards, I need to know what p of x equals zero is, and I don't know what that is currently. So, let's think about this. In eight of the last 20 years, there have been earthquakes, so how many years have there not been any earthquakes? Well, 20 minus 8 is 12, so basically 12 years out of the 20, there have been no earthquakes. So again, because I know that in 8 of the last 20 years there have been earthquakes, that in 12 of those years, in the last 20, there have been no earthquakes. Um, so that tells me my probability of earthquake not happening is 12 out of 20, which is equal to 0 0.6. So 12 out of the 20 years there were no earthquakes. I know my probability of it not happening. As a basic step, I would probably write down my formula with the zero substituted into it so that you get that evidence for your marking and that has to equal 0 0.6. And then if you want to, from there, you can leap straight ahead to the negative ln of, sorry, negative ln 0 0.6 is equal to lambda. And again, putting that into your calculator, you get 0 0.51 is equal to lambda. So that will work for you. Show your substitution and then show your answer. Um, but remembering that comes out of this situation here, where we do ln of both sides, and then last situation, ln, negative ln, 0 0.6 is going to get you lambda. So again, you can just go straight from there and from there. Show your substitution in, and then straight into the formula you've memorized. So it's actually not too bad if you memorize it and know how to do it, or if you've got the algebra skills to rearrange for that. Um, so you've got a few problems to go and look at in your workbook, and there'll be more on stats online, I'm sure. So give a go with some of those problems. And again, the trick is you're going to be finding the mean, but you always have to figure out first what's the probability of it not happening. And then from there, you're okay.